Hey everyone, Port I Sam. Welcome to part one of our Kitbox BMW M3 video build. Ah! Hey, yeah, so we're back with another build. This one has come straight to ISM, straight to release to ISM. So this kit was given to me by Kitbox, very kindly donated for review and build. I've done a review on it, it's back in the channel. It looks absolutely fantastic, really, really good. It's got a lot of promise. And it's a kit I've looked forward to building for quite some time. And even more so today, because if you've seen the news on Facebook and on my live streams, myself and Simon Shorey are starting a new company called Pro Scale Paints. So we're gonna be selling automotive-based um, paints mixed to uh, order, We'll have uh, paint in stock. We've got a 2K clear coat. We'll have primers, other products as well along the way, etch primers, degreasers, and what have you. Like I said, we've got to start a range of paints in stock right now. We've only been going since Monday, really, and it's Thursday today. Um, and we can mix on order, any color you want. And if you've got any questions or comments, pop them down below. And if you want to look at our Facebook page, we're selling via Facebook at the minute. We're setting up a Facebook shop. Um, the link to the Facebook page is down below. But come over and have a look. Paints look absolutely fantastic. You're going to see them in action today. Uh, and our 2K clear coat, I am very impressed with. And again, you're going to see all that today. So you're going to see our degreaser, our primer, which is in test phase at the minute, our colors, and you're going to see our clear coat in action today as well. Any questions, pop them down below. Go and have a look at our Facebook page. You can message us on there as well with any orders or any requests you'd like. We can mix anything really. You you name it, we can mix it. Our paints are cheap, four pound per bottle. Our two K system is twelve pound as well for twice the amount of lower the other companies supply. So good value for money as well. And uh, yeah, I hope our new business venture will do well. All right, there we go. Thanks everybody. Um, let's crack on with the build. Let's get some clean up on the body and get some primer on the BMW. Right then, so we're back on this kit box kit. I reviewed this a while back. You can go back on the channel and have a look. From all intents and purposes, from the review, it looked absolutely fantastic. So, as you use on these resin kits, I always like to make sure the panel lines are nice and deep. So, I'm just going to give it a very light scribe over with my Holly scriber. We're not going too deep. I'm not applying a load of pressure. I'm just making sure that the panel lines are all evenly uh, the same depth all around. And the clear of any obstructions because although this resin is super clean you do tend to get a few obstructions in the channel of the panel lines we don't want to interfere with our wash later on so a quick go over with the scriber we'll sort those out no problem be nice and careful take your time be confident with it there's nothing worse than slipping and putting a mark on there at all because it takes a lot of sanding to get it out once we've done that we're going to go around and thoroughly scuff up all the resin resin is super smooth I'm scuffing up with a 3000 grit Tamiya sponge here uh, and that way it gives a good key for our primer because obviously if it's a rougher surface it has thousands of micro abrasions in it which allows any paint and primer to grip better. So I'm just going around, I'm applying no real pressure, I'm just lightly going around and scuffing all the surface of the resin um, to get a nice even uh, flat finish all around. Brilliantly finished resin on this kit, absolutely superb, very very clean. And just need a minimal go over with the sponge. We've got our trusty Mickey Mouse toothbrush. And we've got around all the panel lines to get any dust or debris out of there. Uh, again, because the preparation here is key to a good finish. And that goes from um, scuffing the surface, cleaning it all up with a toothbrush, degreasing it, priming it, good paint technique. All pays off in the end. Um, so another product from myself and um, Simon at ProScale is our pre-paint degreaser. So this is a degreaser that will remove all the nasties. The instructions are on the back of all of our bottles as well. Um, so pop your lid off, get a nice clean piece of kitchen paper, apply a little bit to this. Need a little bit more, you can add a bit more. And what we're going to do is go all over the body and just degrease the entire thing. So any residue that's left behind, any fingerprint residue, any mold release residue, anything like that can be removed, and we'll end up with a nice contaminant-free surface for our primer. 
Like I say, I always say this, preparation is key. The better the job you do now, and each step of the way of this will result in a better finished model. Uh, model. So, yes, I have still got a hold of it. Once we've got this mounted on whatever I choose to spray it on, I'll put a little bit more on and just rub it all over again quicker with my fingerprints have been. But be thorough here, go around all the model, because, you know, sometimes... There'll be a bit of a nasty mould release hidden in a wheel arch or a door shut or a window. And this is your chance to get rid of it. Another new product from us. This one is still under testing right now. But I thought I'd show it today. This is our grey microfiller primer. Um, it's working out very well so far. It's quite a thick primer. But it does lay on nice and thin. So it's pre-thinned in the bottle. As all our paints are bar our 2K. So pop it into your colour cup. Spray about 20-25 PSI. In a 0.3 mil or higher needle nozzle airbrush and we've gone over our model with our anti-static brush give it a quick blow with the airbrush i'm just going to put down three to four light coats you don't need to put this on heavy at all this is a really nice uh, lacquer base primer so obviously make sure you've got your respirator on gloves on your spray booth on you're in a room by yourself all the normal safety precautions with the uh, more smelly paints and like I said, we're going to put three or four coats down. We don't need to go really heavy with it, but be more um, focused on getting coverage, getting all those nooks and crannies, all the wheel arches, all the lower sills, in all those window creases, all the little vents and what have you, and just build it up slowly. Don't be in a rush to get your paint down. Three thinner coats is much better than two heavier ones. You will get a much better finish. Now, the idea of this, it's a micro filler primer. So it is going to go on and dry not quite as smooth as some primers because of its micro filling capabilities. But once you flat it back, like I'm going to in a bit, it is super smooth. And if there's any slight imperfections in that bodywork, um, it will fill it in. It will make a huge difference and give you a really nice base for your paint. So I'd highly recommend using this, obviously for more than one reason. It's our product, but it is really good. Like I say, it's still under testing right now. Myself and a few of the guys are testing it. Uh, I've tried it on plastic. It works really well. And resin today works really great as well. But like I say, nice light thin coats with any of these paints is the key. Like I say, you're much better with four lighter coats than two heavy ones it will always look better so just go around the model and see you've got even coverage everywhere paying attention like i say to all those nooks and crannies all the windows the vent behind the uh the front bonnet everywhere and we're just going to let it all build up nice and slowly until we get a nice coverage of primer once this is done put it to one side for five minutes let it flash off and then you can come back and apply another coat and like I say, three to four coats, I think I put four on this, is more than sufficient to um, get even primer coverage all over. As you can see, it lays down really well. It's a really nice grey colour, this one as well. It's not too dark. This is the fourth coat going on now. We've literally gone round, repeated the coats, uh, building up nice and slow, getting all those wheel arches, all those lights, um, all the door handles all the little creases everywhere just to make sure we get everywhere primed quite a tricky car to prime this one there's lots of angles and recesses but like i say beautiful color and as you can see even though i'm telling you it's a micro uh, filler primer it hasn't affected the panel lines at all all the surface detail and definition is still there so it's not like it's mega mega thick but boy when you sand this you'll see what i mean about how smooth this is so like i say it's not released yet it's still under testing it should be out very very soon uh, it would be available in grey, white, black, yellow, and hopefully pink as well with the other colour we have. Um, so pay attention. We'll announce when it's released. But I thought, hey, what better guinea pig than my own model uh, and show it on camera as well so you can see just how good it is. But it does go down really, really well. It's dry within minutes. This is probably a couple of minutes after spraying and it's already dried. Absolutely beautiful. And like I say, none of that definition has been lost. All the panel lines are still there, and yeah, absolutely fantastic. Works really well. Very happy with this. So, really nice body shape on this um, BMW. This is pre-large front grille BMWs, which I don't mind, to be fair. But this is a pretty car, this one. I really do like this. So, we've let the primer dry for probably a couple of hours now. We've got our 3000 grit Tamiya sponge, and we're going to go round and just lightly sand all the bodywork until we've scuffed everywhere off we don't want to go too heavy we don't want to go through the primer if you do go through chuck another coat on let it dry and repeat 
We just want to very lightly key the top surface and you'll see what I mean about how silky smooth it goes. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, the finish left behind, absolutely smooth as a baby's bottom and just absolutely fantastic, really good. So just take your time, don't go too heavy, especially on any recessed or raised areas because it's easy to burn through if you're not careful and work your way around till you're all done. After that, we're going to go to the toothbrush again, give it a dust over and a blow over. Two paints here. I've got Pro, uh, Pro Scale Blue Snapper Rock Blue. It's Blue Snapper Rock Blue. BMW Snapper Rocks Blue and BMW Daytona Violet. I couldn't choose which color to do, and I finally settled on the Violet Metallic. I am going to do another car in the Snapper Rocks Blue because I just love that color. Um, but I decided to paint it in this color, and I'm glad I did. Now, we don't have mixer balls in our paints, mainly because I know a lot of people use paint mixers and i've seen bottles get smashed before with mixer balls in so we've opted not to put mixer balls in so make sure you get a good stir up with your battery powered mixer or a handheld you know tamiya mixer or whatever get it all mixed up and make sure you mix it between refills of the airbrush as well because the pigments and colors and that can settle so always agitate it back now we're at about 18 psi here and we're going to put down in total, it's eight coats. I've already gone through and counted. I lost track on the day. I thought I'd done seven, because I normally do five to seven. But I actually did eight on this one. And that's it. That's as thick as coat as we want on the first coat. Um, we don't want to go any heavier, because we don't want to build the paint up too much. Like I say, you're better putting down multiple thinner coats than uh, less larger one, uh, thicker ones, because it will look better. Trust me, been there and done it. Thinner coats are the way to go. Uh, we're on resin here on plastic exactly the same just nice like thin coats building it up um, They are a lacquer paint, so you still need to be careful You don't be hosing it on and by in no way shape or form do you want to put any wet coats down? It's not how this type of paint works this type of paint dries in satin like a satin flat So you do not want to go crazy and hosing it on just nice like thin coats as you can see now one thing I did do on this and it's something i've been thinking of it's completely unrelated to pro scale it's myself is this is my hpc plus and i have noticed on a few cars when i'm putting down the first coats i get lines um in the color and it's because the pattern on the hpc plus isn't quite as wide as my other revolution and the apex now my apex is out of action at the minute i'm waiting on some spare part i haven't sorted it yet uh because i might have dropped it and ran over it with my chair as you do um so i put a few coats on with the uh, hpc plus and then switched over to my revolution uh, i'm just going to show this first coat go down and then we'll go through each coat on a single side of the body so yeah i'm just not quite happy with the coverage this is a brilliant airbrush the hpc plus but it's more suited for detail or finer paint on a smaller part and something large like this the pattern is just a little bit too tight can you see it there can you see the lines in the color it's just um, it's just not covering as well as I'd like it to. And I've thought this for a while, and this is the one that proved it to me. I thought, yep, yeah, I need a wider pattern brush. So uh, we will switch to my Revolution in a second. And I bought another Revolution. I have actually bought a 0.5 this time that um, will get used for either clear coat or for this. But you see what I mean about the lines. And you'll see it disappear as soon as I switch to the Revolution because... Revolution's got a wider pattern on it. It's more of a broader base spray. So, like I say, completely unrelated to the paint or anything. Just a personal preference by me. So, there's the first coat done. We'll let five minutes go there. Um, and then we'll come back with our second coat. We're still on the HPC Plus. And between coats, we're going to alternate from going side to side to up and down. And that way, we get in all those nooks and crannies, all those panel lines. As you can see, I'm not hosing the paint on. We're doing nice thin coats building up. And you can see that coverage coming. It's getting there slowly. And I always do a pass along the sill at the bottom and a pass along the door shut at the top as well, uh, across the top. But that's it. That's HPC Plus. I'm going to switch over to my Revolution now. And you'll just see the coverage gets instantly better. It's just more suited to a wider pattern. So this is coat number three. And it's just better. Like I said, I can come back from the model a little bit because the spray is a bit broader. It's giving a bit of a test spray. There we go, yeah. 
when you change airbrushes you've got to get used to the uh, the pattern on it because it can catch you out otherwise um, i'm trying to get slightly overlapping coat here as i go i'm trying to figure out how wide the pattern is on the airbrush but it's instantly better it's just covering so much better and you can see the coverage on the paint coming through really well so this is coat number four i believe it is let me count one two three this is coat number five sorry we're building up nicely now you can see that real depth of color coming through and again between coats we're alternating from side to side to up and down still at 18 psi you can go down as low as 10 12 psi if you wish i just like to have a little bit of air there to get it out and you can see the color coming through absolutely beautiful absolutely fantastic and again just slowly does it build it up nice and slow give five minutes between each coat and there we go you can see that beautiful purple color it's absolutely stunning this color it really is but I really do need to do a model on that snapper rocks blue because i just love that blue it's great and again another coat i reckon this is coat what is this that'll be eight seven this is coat six i think it is i've lost track now i did this when i was spraying on the day as well so let me go back there's one two three four five this is coat six we're on now just building it up slow like i said you'll get a much better finish doing multiple coats as you can see my paint works nice and smooth it's all even the colors there the colors fabulous really really is coat number seven this is our last up and down pattern sorry about my camera going in out of focus i've not got my focus point in the correct point i have to put the focus point of the camera on the model otherwise it catches the airbrush and sometimes i forget and there we go that's the final coat look at that coverage look at that color it's absolutely stunning it really is and there we go there's our last touches to the color done clean up really easy with our paints we sell our own cleaner uh, and thinner combined so you can use that to clean out to top quality thinner really high quality it'll clean out your airbrushes very quickly uh, you can also use it to thin our paint if you need to thin it a touch more as well um, but look at that color absolutely stunning really is a pretty pretty color but I'm gonna have to do that blue I really do so there we go this is dried now it's a couple of hours later this is under a different light of the bench it's much higher lit in my spray booth it's not as high lit on the bench so the colors do show a little bit differently we've got masking to do now so we're going to use a combination of tamiya one two three mil um ten six and a bit of 18 and basically all the tamiya tapes to mask off all the black work on these it's a different process to the plastic kits because the glass goes in from the outside on these and because it's ca glued in place with a little bit of tension I like to get the black work in 2K and know that that's a, a good clear coat to hold the super glue on. So it's a different way around to the usual windows. We normally do this at the end, but on the uh, Alpha model and the kit box kits, it gets done first. So it's a bit tedious. So we've got the windows to mask, the roof rails to do as well, front and rear side as well. So it is an hour or two of time spent. And again, the more time and patience you have, um, the better the job you'll do and one thing i did notice on this the roof was quite thin on this and while i was pressing down i was getting a little bit of flex on the roof so be very careful if you build one of these kit box kits um, the roof just does seem quite thin um just take your time you don't need to apply a lot of pressure but obviously just bear that in mind when you're doing things and like i say it is tedious this job but the better the job you do the much better it'll look in the end um it really will and um, before you commit to putting any paint down make sure you burnish down the tape go around run your finger around again and burst it all down there we go there's the windows all actually masked off now we just need to infill all the other areas detack your tape every single piece of tape you put on your paintwork decat detack it put it on the back of your hand peel it on off a couple of times and it'll lose a lot of its stickiness but still have enough stickiness to stick to the model because the worst thing you can do is pull your paint off. It will happen. It, it, it happens to all of us inevitably. And detacking the tape will significantly reduce the risk of that with any paints. For the larger areas, I've got some cling film. Um, I think it's also known as saran wrap or sandwich wrap or plastic wrap. Um, 
and we just cut a bit off, we fold it over, cut it in half, a bit of Tamiya tape, and we can infill all the larger areas to save waste in tape. A word of warning, do not do this if you've got decals on there. Uh, I've seen people put this film over decals, and for some reason it rips the decals off when you pull it off. I don't know what it is, I think it just sticks to them. So if it's a decal body, don't use the cling film saran wrap on them. In the booth, we've got the uh, Mr. Service of 1500 Black. Like I said, before we started to spray, we've gone around and burnished all the tape back down. So we know we've got a nice, uh, clean, crisp edge on the masking tape. And probably before light coating, getting all those angles, all the recesses and what have you. Once that's done, let that dry for a bit, and then we're going to carbon the roof. So there's no carbon sheet with this car, so I've cut off a bit of the Tamiya cross weave. Just a bit bigger than we need. And we're going to pop it on and get this in place. Now, I think it's quite an important look on some of these BMWs, the carbon roof. I think it's kind of a signature look on them. It looks really, really good. Uh, I would have liked to have got the pre-cut carbon with this kit. It's a real shame. It's probably the only thing the kit doesn't have that I would have liked to have got. Because the Alpha Model M3 and M4 have pre-cut carbon decal for the roof. And I really would like to have seen it come with this kit. But it's no hardship, pop it on, lay it in place, get it roughly where you want it, get your decal brush, get all the moisture out from under it, and then hit it with your favourite decal solutions to get it to start setting. And then we've got to cut where the roof rails are. Leave the outer edge black, because that will be glossed black with the carbon in the middle. I've looked at the real pictures and you can see it. And it's a case you just work in the decal until you get all the moisture out from under it, then hit it with decal solutions, getting all the creases out, and then cutting the edges to get it all down. So as you can see, I've gone round with the brush. I like using water pens from uh, Derwent. And then once you've got it mostly down where you want it and starting to set, you can cut off the excess from the front and back. Brand new scalpel blade in my scalpel here. Just gently run it over. There we go. Move in the excess and then burnish it all down. You should be able to see the lines of the roof rails. If it moves, just come in a little bit. Cut down the longest bit first. And then go back, spin it round, and just cut the other off later. So it's tricky to do. The more you do this, the better you'll get. I have to do this in two pieces, as you've seen. The next one will get in one. So there we go. There's that one. Once you've got it off, you can get your brush, burnish it down into the panel line. Like so. So we want to get rid of all these creases. Same on the other side. Give it a little burnish down with the brush so you show the panel line. Then get your scalpel in there. And just let it follow the panel line naturally. There's one side. And then we go where we cut it originally. Doesn't take a lot of pressure. Let the blade do the work using a razor sharp blade. Just remove the excess gently. There we go. And then burnish it down with the brush again with a bit of solution on to get it into the panel line. Simple as that, really. Takes a bit of doing. The more you do it, you get better at. It's definitely a, a skill you get much better at with time. And after a bit of work, there we go. The roof is in. For the hole in the middle of the roof where we've got our shark fin antenna, I've literally just slit through the hole in the middle. Put some uh, decal solution. I'm using UMP um, Strong on this. Is all I used. Pop it in, let it work for a minute, and then push it down with the brush. UMP decal solutions are fantastic on decals. They work absolutely great. Really good. Panel line wash. We've got some Tamiya black panel line here. Straight out the bottle on this one. Because it's a dark purple. I'm just going to do a straight black on it. Pop it into the panel line. The capillary reaction carry it all round. Leave it for 20-30 minutes till it dries. And then get a nice clean bit of tissue. Some cotton buds. And I like to use Windsor Newton Sansador. That's odorless mineral spirits. To remove the excess. And we're left with the panel line showing really nicely then. Like I say, get your uh, tissue. Be nice and gentle. You don't need a lot of pressure. 
and just rub it until you get all the excess off. If you find you get the wash runs, it hasn't quite dried, so they dry a little bit longer. And there we go. We can start wiping off all the panel lines and getting a beautiful body ready for 2K. And there we go, that's ready. So we'll let that dry overnight in my nice warm cave. And the following morning, which is actually today, we've got ProScale 2K Clear Coat. So uh, it's another product from myself and Simon. It's a 2K Clear Coat. It's a fast drying one. Works really, really well. £12 set. The paints are £4 each. Uh, and they're available on our Facebook page, which I'll link in the description down below. So there's a clear coat, an activator, and a thinner. And I'll explain how they mix. So it's two parts of clear, one part of activator, and then whatever that combined total of those two is, it's 5% thinner. So here right now, I am adding 6 milliliters of clear, and then I'm adding 3 milliliters of activator, and we're going to mix that together to get the chemical reaction started. So that's six mil of clear, three mil of hardener, two to one mix, two parts clear, one part hardener. That equals nine mil in total, which 10% would be nine mil. 5% that would be four and a half, but we're just going to equal it up and put 5% of thinner in there. For me, that's the best ratio. If you feel like you need to thin it more or less, that's up to you. But I've played around with this quite a bit now. I've done This is about the sixth or seventh body shell I've cleared. And this mix works the best for me. There we go. We grab our thinner. So it's half a mil of thinner. Just a little bit too much there. There we go. Pop that in. Not a lot of thinner at all, which is always good on clear coats because it means they're a lot safer with decals. Now, safety precautions, good respirator, very good respirator rated for organic materials, good spray booth, in a room by yourself, no pets, no family, Gloves on, double glove that left hand. Nit nitrile gloves are the safest. Keep any skin covered as much as you can, especially your eyes. Um, I, have, I put cling film over my arm. I know it looks crazy, but it's the simplest way of covering my left arm. Um, and we're going to strain it. Always strain your 2Ks. Ours is pre-strained. I would still recommend strain it. We sell the strainers on Pro Scale. You can get them from us. They're fairly cheap. But yes, I would always strain 2K just to make sure everything is spot on we've gone over the body shell with our anti-static brush which is a very important precaution to do quick dust over with our airbrush and air we're at about 25 psi what we're going to do is we're going to lay down a semi-wet first coat so different clear coat different application so if you follow my guide you shouldn't go wrong so the first coat is a semi-wet it's a bit heavier than normal you can see it going down this is as the manufacturer recommends, and it works very well. Trust me, like I say, it's the seventh one I've done now. Look at the Corvette I finished the other day, done exactly the same way. But it's going round. Like I say, we're at 25 PSI. This is my Iwata Revolution 0.3. It's got a decent sized fan pattern. Well, not fan pattern, but broad pattern uh, needle nozzle set on it. And I'm putting enough down so it looks semi gloss, exactly like I say. And just make sure you get nice even coverage. Pay attention to those sills. Quite often a part I miss is the sills. I don't know why. Um, always make sure you go over them. On the front like this, on bonnets and bumpers and that, getting all those little recesses and nooks and crannies. You may have to come in at an angle a bit like I just have there. Uh, make sure you get underneath. And then on the larger areas, the sides and the bonnet, overlap your coat just a touch. You see the way I'm overlapping there? Just overlap it a little bit. Keep that wet edge going and just build it up. And like I say, we're not trying to get that wet coat now. We're going exactly what I said for a semi wet coat. Now, you may get dust in there and debris. It's just the nature of clear coats. When you don't want dust, you'll get dust. They can all be polished out later on. They can be flatted back and polished out. So don't worry about that. 2K is probably the easiest one to get blemishes out of because you've got a lot of material to work with. Um, we're going straight over the decals there, no issue whatsoever over the carbon. And what we're going to be left with here is an orange peel clear coat at the end of this first coat. And that's exactly what we want. Same on the back, just get nice even coverage of a semi wet clear coat. Now, the beauty of this clear coat is it's only a three to five minute flash off time, so it's five minute dry on this first coat. Um, 
we don't need to remix a second batch for the final coats because we're getting into it so quick, which is really good. It's going to save money and uh, wastage over time. Um, and like I say, just go around, make sure it's even all over. Looks pretty good to me. And once you're happy with it, pop it back in your little box. I have my box to the left there. There's a drop-down front on it. It's a small, really useful box it is. We're a drop-down front. So I'm a quick look. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Pop it in there, and then we can grab our two wing mirrors and our door handles, which are going to be done at the same time. As usual, smaller parts, be careful. It's so easy to overspray them. You don't need as much as you think you do. As you can see there, you just get a quick go over. Done. And the same with the mirrors. I've got multiple angles to do on the mirrors. These are quite tricky mirrors to do because they've got all weird shapes to them. It does call for carbon on the mirrors. I don't think I'm going to do carbon. I don't like the look of it at all. So, yeah. Once they're done, in the box, five minutes, and we're back. And this time, I'm going to put a full wet coat down. So, as you can see, we're slowed down the airbrush a bit. So, we're getting more paint down. We're still overlapping that wet coat. Now, don't be worried about getting it perfect on this one, because I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So, this is our second coat. Now, whilst this will be technically three coats, I'm still classing this as two because we're not leaving that long flash off time in between. So there you go, there's our wet coat. Now it's a good wet coat, and if you're happy, leave it there. If you're not, pop it back in your box for 60 seconds, 60 to 90 seconds, let, let the 2K self-level itself. Bring that back out and have a look. If you think it needs more, give it more. So each one of these times you do this, it will vary. Sometimes you'll get it in two, Sometimes it'll only need three, sometimes it'll need three in a bit, because your spray style is going to vary on every model you build because it is a variable thing of what you're doing. So the best advice to me is do that semi-west first coat, let it flash off for five minutes, come back in, do that first full wet coat that we're doing here now. As you can see, get a nice layer of 2K down, overlapping that wet coat. And once we're done, we'll put it back in that box for a minute while we do the wing mirrors and the handles, and then we'll get it out and have a look. And if there's enough on there, it will self-level itself to a glass-like look. And if not, we're going to put a little bit more down. So we are still going to class this as technically two coats, just because we're not allowing that flash off time. We're just letting it to self-level a touch. So you can already see we've got a decent clear coat there, but it's not quite perfect. If you look at the roof, you can still see a little bit of orange peel there. So this is where your judgment comes in. Like I say, the variable here is you. Sometimes you're going to get it spot on with two coats. Sometimes it's going to take three. Don't be worrying. Just follow this guide and it'll work absolutely perfect. Like I say, there you go. Quick look. Your light is your friend here. Get your wheel arches as well. Your light is your friend because it was showing the imperfection. So angle it so you can see. Like I say, some people will be happy with that. Me, I'm not quite happy. So back in the box it goes. It's probably going to be in there for about 60 seconds while we finish off the mirrors and the door handles. So we have a quick look. Get these done. There we go. Happy with those. They can go in. And the mirrors again. As I say, there's full instructions on the back of the bottles on mixing them basic spray guidelines but this is more the guideline for putting this down so it's been 60 seconds this is self level as you can see it has self leveled really well i'm not quite happy with it it needs a touch more for me so we're just going to give it another coat moving a little bit faster than we were before just a little bit more we're just not quite as far back on the brush as we were because we're not trying to get loads of the 2k down I'm just going to go all over a little bit more speed than last time. Get the bottom of the sill again. Spin it around. And there we go. We've got our coverage down. Now, I have shown this in real time. I know it's dragged the video on a little bit longer than normal. But I think it's important to explain these things properly. This is my technique. I kind of hone this over several bodies now to figure out which way works the best. It is a new 2K. It's a different spray technique. 
but it works better you use less 2k as well you're not wasting any and it dries mega fast this was touch dry in two hours and cured in four handleable in four hours i would still recommend leaving it a while longer before you start messing around with it um and it's fully cured in five days my corvette was ready in five days no problems at all and again what we're going to do here is we're going to put down the wet coat pop it back in our box for a minute just let itself level and have a look at the end what it's like so halfway through this i ran out of uh, clear unfortunately so i had to mix a little bit more but you see them I mean. so there's our third coat down i'm looking all good it's not bad at all i just need to let the 2k self level a little bit and we'll see what she comes back like you can see that side so there's a touch of orange peel so it needs a little bit more there Like I say, it's your judgment here. You just want to get rid of the orange peel. Now, the 2K is forgiving. It is a fine line between putting too much down. But it gets that sticky at this stage is what helps it not run. There we go. That's much better now. Much, much happier with that. Give this side a quick go over as well. It looks like I'm putting loads of it down. It's not. It's, it's just the way it atomizes. It looks like a lot of paint going down. It's not actually all that much. It's surprising how little it takes to get a coat of 2K on. There we go. I'm just putting that inside there for a minute because I ran out. I had to quickly mix some more 2K. And there we go. This is it. Now, this is what we'll do. Is this is our final coat. So, I reckon it was three wet coats and a quick dust over where we need it just to get it right. This is a quick dust over. Like I say, it's deceptive. It looks like I'm putting loads of paint down. I'm not. There's not a lot going down here. It's a high pressure. It's getting well atomized. And there we go. And there we go. Absolutely beautiful. It's fully self-leveled now. It's been, what, about 10, 15, 20 seconds. And it's self-leveled itself out. Near enough perfect. That will do me. Very happy. A little bit of dust in there, but that's going to happen. Like I say, if you spot anywhere that just needs a touch more, don't be afraid of just putting a tiny bit more in. It's not a problem at all. I've got a little hair on the bottom of my sill there. I'm going to grab it with my tweezers. Now, one criticism 2K gets a lot that's too thick. And if it was left like this, it would be. But the beauty of 2K is you're left with lots of material to work with. And that's the whole idea of this, that once it's cured, this will still keep self-leveling, so it will flatten out even more. Is once it's fully cured, it can all be flatted completely back, flat, and then polished up with compounds and polishes. So you can lose that thickness. Now, obviously, some people choose not to polish it. That's up to you. You can leave it like that. I will always polish mine, uh, flat mine back and polish it up. And obviously, how far you go is on you. It, it's literally your choice on how thick a finish you want. But yes, admittedly, out the gun, it is a bit thick. But once it's flatted back and polished, it can look really good. This is about ooh, two hours after I originally sprayed. As you can see, this is what the light's on in my booth. I've got a nice clear coat set my window there. Very nice colour. I've got nice depth on the 2K. It's levelled out really well. We've got no orange peel. It's looking really good. And put my nuclear lights on. It's like a nuclear blast. There we go. Absolutely beautiful. Once this is fully cured and been flatted back, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. Really good. We, we have mega bright lights in the spray booth, FYI. For filming, I need the lights, and it is proper OTT. So it's great for painting because you can spot any flaws. But really happy with that. It's come out really well. So, yeah, happy with that finish. Uh, like I say, once we're flatted back, it's going to look really good. The colour looks absolutely fantastic. You can see the colour a little bit better under my studio lights on my actual bench, which I'll show in a second. Again, mega high lighting. So it does show it. Metallic flakes look good. They're not too big. I think they're about right. Obviously, you need metallic flakes and a metallic finish. Uh, the carbon roof looks absolutely fantastic. Um, once it's been flatted and polished, this is going to look great. Really good colour. But I really do need to do that Snapper Rocks blue. Um, so I'm thinking of starting another M3, possibly the Alpha Models one. This kit box one is phenomenal. If you haven't watched the review, go back and have a look. But that's where we're at today with this. So happy with all the ProRisk scale stuff. Go and have a look at our Facebook page. It's linked in the description down below. 
We will colour mix paint as well, and we have a few in stock right now. There we go, that's where we're at today. Absolutely fantastic. Primer work, wonderful. The paint laid down, absolutely fantastic. What a beautiful colour that Daytona Violet is. And the 2K, wonderful. Going down, absolutely fantastic. Touch dry in two hours it was. I checked it, um, and it's handleable now. It's uh, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It's easily handleable. Dries in about four hours. It takes five days to fully cure, just so it's fully cured to polish. Um, but you can see the results speak for themselves. And like I say, once we flat that back and polish it, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. There we go. That's where we're on there today. Now, I'm going to have to do something in that snapper blue. And I contemplate starting either the Alpha Models G80 M3, which is the first one of the larger grills, or the G82 M4. I've got them both there. I've had them out of the box and had a look. But I need to do one of them in that snapper blue. It's just too pretty of a colour not to do. So I'm contemplating starting this. So you may get two builds here. Yeah, we'll see. We're gonna they're gonna be split up a bit. One will go on Patreon first. Um, but this one's been released straight to here for obvious reasons today. There we go. Got any questions or comments? Pop them down below. Any queries or comments about Pro Scale? Hit me up, and uh, we'll see what colours we can match for you. And go over to our Pro Scale Facebook page. It's linked in the description down below. Have a look what's current in our offer. And like I say, if there's any paint you want mixing, let us know the codes and the colours, and we'll sort things out. Our catalogue will be added to as we go. We are a new company. We're just starting out, so it's baby steps to begin with. We will post worldwide. We post to the UK. Like I say, the paints are four pounds per bottle for thirty mil. You'll get two or three cars out of one bottle of normal one twenty fourth, one twenty fifth. Two K clear is twelve pound per set, and that's for sixty mil clear. So it's twice as much as a lot of other companies out there. Um, postage is a flat rate in the UK of six pound fifty, and that's by DPD Courier. And there's lots of other products being added and lots of other colours will be added along the way. But like I say, if you've got any colour custom, custom colours you want mixing, let us know and we'll mix those up for you. There's no extra charge for a custom colour. So just hit us up, let us know and we'll sort that out for you. All right. There we go. Thanks for watching today. I'm really excited with this kit. I've looked forward to this one for a while. It looks brilliant and I'm really looking forward to progressing with this. But I'm also looking forward to getting that Snapper Rocks Blue down. So keep an eye out for pictures of that on my social media. Speaking of which, down below, if you'd like to support my videos and keep the content going, I have a patron. There's loads of perks to become a patron. You get early access on videos, exclusive access video builds, exclusive reviews. There's a Facebook supporter group, a Facebook supporter chat group. There's monthly live streams. You get to vote on things, and you keep these videos going. Without your support, I couldn't keep doing this. This is my day-to-day -day job. Um, so please go down, go and have a look at that. There's a buy me a coffee and a PayPal me link as well if you feel like making a one-off donation towards the channel. There's links below to anything and everything with me. There's links to ISM Facebook page and forum, upretail.com, ProScale Paint is down there as well, our Facebook page. My social media is there, my Paul ISM Facebook page. You've got links to our Hangout group, the group build page, all that is down there. There's an email address to get in touch with me with any inquiries as well. There's a link to my stash there on Scalemate too. And as always, make sure you sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, give the bell a notification hit, and leave a comment. Love reading all your comments down below. Let me know th what you think of this colour. Let me know what you think of the clear coat. And like I say, if you've got any orders you want doing, hit us up over at ProScale. All right, there we go. I'll be back very soon for part two of this with my compressor. And uh, enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, compressor. There we go. Bye. See you everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.